Software and Security Engineering, Lecture 6, Segment 4. My next example of a hugely expensive um, government project failure is smart meters. These are going to cost us, as bill pairs in the UK, something like £20 billion, and they're not going to save any energy. So how could things go wrong? Well, the idea started off in the early 2000s, and it was a response of the electricity meter industry to the dot-com boom. Um, what the uh, electricity meter vendors like Hytron wanted to do um, was to sell people uh, a meter that cost £50 every 15 years rather than selling a meter that cost £15 every 50 years. So the idea that they had is that if you built a meter that could phone home with your electricity reading and could do so regularly, like every half hour, you could then expose consumers to market prices because market prices aren't just peak and off peak, market prices change every half hour through the day. And if you could get consumers to face the real costs of providing electricity during the early evening peak, you could perhaps persuade people to shave the peak demand, um, and you could perhaps um, save energy use overall by making energy use salient. At least this was the idea. And there were some early pilot studies in the early 2000s round about the Seattle area which suggested that you might be able to do this. So the meter makers lobbied away hard and um, by 2009 they managed to put into the EU Electricity Directive a rule saying that member states should assess whether smart meters would be economically viable and if so they should commit to replacing 80% of the smart meters by 2020. Now this was something that the EU did more or less uh, as a means of appearing to do something um, about uh, climate change without taking any of the really painful choices. So in the UK, what had happened is that there had been two previous assessments as to whether smart meters would be um, worthwhile, and um, both of them concluded that the net present value would be negative. In other words, they wouldn't pay for themselves. In 2009, however, Labour acquired a new um, Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change in the form of Ed Miliband, and he decided that he was going to push ahead um, with a huge centralised project to save the planet and help to fix a supply crunch that had been predicted to arrive by 2017. As a result, in, in fact, the supply, the supply crunch didn't occur because demand didn't grow the way people had anticipated because of the financial crisis. But nonetheless, um, a centralised project to install uh, smart meters in everybody's home was signed off. In 2010, power changed and the coalition agreement um, specified that the government would push ahead with smart meters. This is one of the demands from the Liberal Democrats, and David Cameron agreed on that as part of the price of being Prime Minister. Two years later, this began to come to attention, and it turned out that the thing was not being managed at all well, and it had escaped the usual controls as people in the Department of Energy and Climate Change had represented it as not being an IT project, and the government's chief information officer was absolutely white hot furious when he found about this and found about uh, how badly things uh, were being run. Um, but nothing could be done politically because um, the Lib Dems dug their heels in and um, the, there was um, also a majority in the Conservative Party in favour of doing smart meters because by then the lobbyists had got to work and the people who expected to make money from it um, you know, were um, duly lobbying away. So we then saw a whole series of missed deadlines. The government, first of all, wanted deployment by the 2015 election. Um, and that didn't happen because the um, specifications for the smart meters couldn't be agreed. So the utilities started deploying legacy smart meters that they knew would eventually have to be pulled out. And the legacy meters also had the feature that they didn't interact with each other. So if you were getting your... Um, electricity from Centrica one year, for example, and the following year you changed your supply to NPower because they were cheaper, you'd either have to replace the meter or else you'd have to go and read the smart meter manually and um, type the reading into a website. What then happened was the Brexit vote, which upset things, and then the 2017 manifesto, um, on which Theresa May um, more or less um, won power, um, watered down the claims to saying that um, everybody will have the right to ask for a smart meter. 
And we started thinking that this would mean that the project would go away, but no, it had acquired its own momentum uh, because the um, electricity companies were being basically allowed to charge the customer for the cost of installing smart meters, and they were still given um, smart meter installation targets as part of the regulatory burden. So what's gone wrong? Well, the fundamental problem in the UK is that in Britain, uh, the um, meter belongs to the energy retailer, that is to the company like Centrica or EDF or whatever, from whom you buy your electrons. And they have got every incentive to sell you as many electrons as they can. And the entire business case for smart meters was founded on the idea that it would help you to save energy. Now, it does that to a small extent in countries like the Netherlands and Spain, where the meters are controlled by the distribution and network operator. But in countries like the UK and Germany and New Zealand, where the meter belongs to the retailer, this just doesn't happen. The Germans some years ago realized that smart meters were not viable um, in, in their ecosystem and abandoned the project. Uh, but Britain didn't. Meanwhile, the technology is getting obsolete. And meanwhile, we also have um, reports from um, places elsewhere in the world um, where various countries and provinces try to install smart meters. In Ontario, for example, like in the UK, um, the meters um, are operated by the energy retailers rather than by the distributors. They've got 40 odd retailers in Ontario and they did a, a multi-billion dollar project to install smart meters and it failed to save any energy at all. Um, why should it save energy? Uh, because um, the idea was that you would be able to charge people more for um, consuming energy in the evening, um, but for political reasons, you end up not being able to charge too much of a differential. Um, you might be able to charge people five cents for a kilowatt hour at night and um, 10 cents during the day and 15 cents in the evening. Um, but when you think about it, um, the difference that that makes to the cost of cooking your steak and chips for your dinner in the evening is uh, maybe 10 cents. Um, if you're lucky, and the, and the steak probably costs you $10, so it's not really significant. So you end up not being able to do the peak demand shaving that you hope to do, but you end up spending millions of dollars. And as those millions of dollars end up going on your bill pairs, that means that you're using up bill pair capacity that could otherwise have been spent on things like feed-in tariffs or, uh, you, you know, to uh, um, encourage people to build windmills or solar PV. So this ended up being a serious policy failure and it's probably going to cost us, in the long run, more than NPFIT did in terms of um, extra energy costs that people have to pay on their bills. But because this is hidden and because this is distributed around 28 million households in Europe, it's not sufficiently politically salient to cause people to get really annoyed about it.